Hey everyone, here's a quick tutorial showing how to use the camera controller app along with the object controller add-on to drive cars in Blender. You can use any rig as long as it follows the same logic. For example, rigs created with the rig car add-on or the cars included with the traffic add-on. With one of these rigs ready, we can get started. First, you'll need to locate the root bone. This is the bone that controls the car's movement. Once you're in pose mode, move the blender cursor to the pivot point of this bone. We'll use this position to link an empty object to the bone. Now, create an empty at that exact location because we're going to link it to the root bone. Now go into pose mode on the rig and select the root bone because we're going to add a constraint to it. Add a child of constraint. And for the target, choose the empty we just created. This is the object we'll use to control the add-on. Once that's done, you can now move the car by simply moving the empty. After that, in the Object Controller Add-on panel, select the first object, the empty that the add-on will control to move and rotate the car in 3D space. This will allow the car to move forward and backward and turn left or right. However, it won't interact with the front wheels just yet. To make that work, I added a driver that controls the steering, which receives input from the add-on steering angle value. We'll take a closer look at how that works in just a moment. Before that, we need to create a camera. This camera will define the control axes. This step is important so the add-on can understand the directions correctly, regardless of where your 3D view is positioned in the scene or how it's rotated. It helps the add-on determine what's forward, backward, left, and right. For this, I created a camera named Origin, which we need to position behind the car, aligned with it, close to the ground, and facing toward the root bone of the rig. With this camera created, we can go to the add-on panel and set it as the reference camera, instead of using the active camera in the scene. In this project, I parented the camera to the empty, so that as the car moves, the camera stays behind it, always following from the original reference position. With this step complete, we now have the first part of the rig set up ready, and we can move on to configuring the front wheels. To do that, click on Start Server in the add-on panel. This will generate a QR code to make it easier to connect with the Android app and improve the user experience. When the server starts, the Enable Drive Mode option will be disabled by default, especially if you're working in a newly created scene. If it's not already active, make sure to enable it. Another option is steering sensitivity. The higher this value, the faster the car's wheels will turn in response to input. Now, one of the most important settings to simulate accurate physics is the wheelbase. This defines the distance between the car's front and rear axles, so that when the wheels turn, they don't appear to be sliding or drifting unnaturally. To get this value, switch to an orthographic view in Blender and use the ruler tool to measure the distance between the rear axle and the front axle. Fill in the field with the value you just measured. You can also adjust the max steering angle if needed, depending on your 3D model. With all of that done, we're almost at the final setup step, defining the left and right wheel rotation for the car's front wheels by creating a driver using the steering angle property from the add-on panel. To get started, let's connect the phone to Blender. Open the Camera Controller app. Go to the option to scan the QR code and then tap Connect. After connecting, tap Start Rotation and perform a roll motion with your phone, tilting it left and right. As you do this, you'll see the steering angle value in the add-on panel moving from minus one to plus one. You'll also notice that the front wheels in the scene are already turning. That's because the driver is already set up. But now, I'm going to show you exactly how to create it yourself. To do this, simply right-click on the Steering Angle property and select Copy as New Driver. Once that's done, go to your rig, enter Pose Mode, and select the bone responsible for controlling the car's front wheels. In this case, the X-axis is used to control the rotation. Right-click on the X rotation, and you should see an option to Paste Driver. In my case, that option isn't visible because the driver is already created, but it will appear if no driver exists yet. After pasting the driver, right-click on the driver you just added and select Edit Driver to fine-tune the rotation amount. That's because we need to adjust the intensity of the value by changing the driver type 
to scripted expression. This allows us to multiply the variable and match it to the desired rotation. In my case, multiplying the steering angle variable by 1.5 gave the correct turning distance for the bone. Keep in mind that this value may vary depending on your rig and 3D model setup. With that done, the rig setup is complete and we're ready to drive the car inside Blender. But before you start testing the wheel rotation, make sure to go back to the app, tap Start Rotation, and perform some left and right roll movements with your phone to check if the front wheels are turning correctly. Now, by enabling walk mode in the app, you can move the car forward and backward. With the rotation function also active, just tilt your phone left or right while moving to steer the car in that direction. Take some time to explore all the features. Inside the add-on or the app, you can make several adjustments, like setting the acceleration factor, which lets you control how fast or slow the car moves. And a nice feature is that you can also simulate inertia, so when you release the joystick, the car gradually slows down instead of stopping abruptly. And that's it, folks. I hope this video helps you out. Take your time to study the add-on and try some experiments. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us by email. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video with more updates.